air conditioning. That's Islander Air, huh? Y'all look so good. God is good. All the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of eternity. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, that you love us and there's no question of your love. Because, Lord Jesus Christ, we know what you did for us. And thank you, Lord, we know what you continue to do through your presence and your Holy Spirit in every believer and follower of yours, Father. Holy Spirit, this is your place. We only welcome you. And we thank you, Father God, that you sent Holy Spirit to comfort us, to give us peace, to give us strength, Father God, to remind us of who we are in you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to teach us. Change me, Father. I only fear you. And Father, may this worship service be the most powerful one yet, not because of us, it's all because of you, Father. We love you, Lord, with all of our heart, soul, minds, and strength. We thank you, Father God, once again, that you are God Almighty. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for rebuking the enemy. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Praise God. I love how you guys just want to pack this section right here. But yet nobody wants to come up in these first two rows. Then y'all decide, I'm, we're going to get up in the water a little bit. Amen. Look, sis, hey, let's give God praise. Sister Jennifer's back. Hallelujah. Let, let, let's, let's, let's get right first. Yeah. We missed you and we're so grateful. Praise God. Hey, but no matter where we're at, we're always one. Ain't that the truth? No matter what. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Are y'all ready to worship the Lord? Hey Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, 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 need to get, I need to get in here. I'm grateful that, um, I'm grateful that Father God has me giving the word tonight. Um, I'm just going to confess to you, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's what you want to hear, huh? Hey, I, I, I said that, Pastor, to somebody earlier this week, and they said, well, why are you the shepherd? I said, That's a good question. I'm the shepherd, but I follow the great shepherd. And I, I hear my heart. I don't know what's going on. I just follow his lead. Amen. Praise God. You don't want me to know what's going on because I'll tell you right now, when the terrain changes, it's like, oh, I don't think we should be here. But the whole time, Lord Jesus says, follow me. Don't look at the terrain. Right? Don't take your eyes off me. Just follow. Amen. So in this worship service, we're going to talk about the 411. How many of you know 411, what that stands for? Right? What does it stand for? Straight up information, right? And God's going to give us information on how to live an abundant, victorious life. Amen? And I know that sounds fancy and all that stuff, but there's a reason why it's called 411. Elena, why are you looking at me like I got three eyeballs? If you're going to keep that up, seriously, I'm going to turn the chair around and you face the other way. Oh, Okay. I love it. I'm, well, you're so adorable because I want to make your husband laugh upstairs, and I, and I successfully did that. Because he can imagine you turned around facing him. Right? You can imagine it. Huh, Brother Aaron? Um, the reason why there's a line, that's the next slide. Let's read this real quick. But one of the elders said to me, say it with me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that right there. The lion, hallelujah, this is Lord Jesus Christ now, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals, amen. And I love it because the elder said, once again, say it again, do not weep. When you study this word weep, it's the obvious, it's the obvious statements as far as worry, right, fret, um, be, um, be burdened, right. God is saying, don't do that. And the reminder is, our God prevails. Amen? Say it again, the Lion of Judah. I love this picture. Um, I actually seen this video back in the day. But I found the picture, and I'm glad that I have the picture up there. And uh, they did this experiment where they put uh, a big mirror in, front of, in, in the lion's den. And then the lion, the big dog, he came over and looked at it. 
And boy, he, he gave like, he gave one of those stares where it's like, are we going to do this? Man, how many of you know that look? Are we going to do this? Right? Are we really going to go there? Trish gives me that look like four times at Walmart. <laughs> are we doing this? Really? Do I, have to t do I have to pull you aside? Sarge knows a chicken wing now, so yeah. But I love this picture because as we were preparing this message together, Holy Spirit says, I want you to put that picture of that lion looking at his reflection. And this is what I want you to put up there, and I want you to say it out loud. And if you want to join me, say it with me. I am a beloved child of God. I am saved. I am redeemed. I am healed. I am sealed. I am covered. I am blessings. I am healing. I am miracles. I am powerful. I am recovered. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Because remember, beloved church family, the only reason why you are a lion or you are who you claim you are is because the great and holy one lives inside of you. Now let me ask you something. Does God share real estate? No, he does not. Which means if you have somebody else occupado, that's a little Spanish for you guys right there. If you yourself occupado, guess what? You need to evict, evict, say it with me, evict. You need to evict whoever is in there because say, say it with me, Holy Spirit is the only one. Amen. When you make Holy Spirit the only one, this is the revelation that God gives you that changes every part of your being. The way you think, the way you speak, and what you allow in your heart that maneuvers you throughout this vapor of a life. When I say maneuver, I'm talking about this. When you follow Jesus and you were saturated and overflowing in his love, he maneuvers your steps because you're constantly following daddy. Can I get an amen? So your life produces this fruit and this presence about you because all you're doing is focused on the Lord that all you want to do is be a blessing unto the Holy Spirit within. Now this is the beauty when everything lines up, my beloved family. When everything lines up in your worship life, in your identity, in how you think, in how you speak, and how you act towards Holy Spirit, the promise and anointing of God Almighty is that nothing can come against his glory. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? But when you allow darkness to creep in, and you start to waver back and forth, Say it with me, be careful. Because as a Christian, you can play this card with God, and it's, it's, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Oh, well, I got grace, so that means I can just keep on messing up because Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. It's a lie from the pit of hell, and that's a demon. Can I get an amen? amen. That is not the Bible. That's not the Bible. If you live your life that way right now, if you think you could play games with God, if you think that you could be a Christian as you sit here, but yet you're harsh to your wife, your time's numbered. Seriously. Men of God, I'm telling you right now, especially you married men, if you're quick to, ah, I want to tell you right now, from my own experience, that will put you in the ground faster than you can ever imagine. You know why? Holy Spirit doesn't play games. Especially if you're married to a godly woman. If you're married to a godly woman, there's an anointing in her. The presence of God is not only in her, but all around her. And everything you say and do to your wife, God knows. And God is protective over her. This is why God said you love her like Christ loves the church. Can I get an amen? amen? How much does Christ love us? Are you all hearing me? Larry, are you hearing me? How much does Christ love us? Yes, pastor. My goodness. Did Christ hold back any drop of his love? No. 
So the glory of God is, is that we should be able to see our salvation in our very relationships, in our marriages. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Same goes for wives, right? Same goes for wives. Can I get an amen? Those of you who are single, praise God. This message isn't just for married folks. Those of you who are single, number one, you need to be married to Christ. Amen. Amen. Bottom line. Don't try to find your identity. Don't try to find your identity in a man or in a woman. I'm going to tell you right now, that's all, that all fades away with the quickness. Very quick. Preach, brother. Amen. Very quick. And I tell you right now, and, and hear my heart, you know, if, if you're quick to be drawn to somebody because they look good, listen, nobody looks gooder than Lord Jesus Christ. Can you get an amen? Nobody looks gooder than him. Hallelujah. Seriously. He is the most handsome. He is the most powerful. He is the most perfect. He is the most sexiest. He is the most gorgeous. He's the most beautiful. He is the mostest of the mostest. He is Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a Hallelujah. You got to fall in love with them. Amen. I love Jesus. You hear pastors say, oh, I, love, I love agape more than anything. Hallelujah. I said it before and some of y'all got crunchy on me. My wife's not even number two. I let God determine that. When you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, guess what? God says, I will love her. And me, not knowing nothing, okay, daddy. Number two. Right? And then from there on, he's like, now my church body, number three. Every one of you. Seriously, even you go, even if you act sideways and cuss me out, I don't care. I, I do care. It hurts me. But what I'm saying is I don't care about that. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Sarge. One person. Hallelujah. Couldn't even get it from my wife. I said it three times. I love you. I love you. I love you, 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 you. So then check this out. I, want, I got this one. Say it with me, 411. We're going to start in Philippians 411. And I love this because this is how it starts. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned. Say it with me, I learned. Don't you think this is important? When the one that wrote... Over three-fourths of the New Testament. When he has something to say and he says, this is what I have learned. This is my question to you. I don't mean to speak condescendingly to you. I cross my eyes. I'm not looking at nobody. I'm not looking at anybody. But isn't this something that we should really be listening to right now? When he says, this is what I've learned. Because God has used him through the anointing of the Holy Spirit to write three-fourths of the Bible. Amen? So say it with me. I am ready to learn. And this is what we're going to learn. Amen? This is what our brother had to say. In whatever state, say it with me, I am to be content. Hmm. Let's look into this word content. When you define content, the adjective is a state of peaceful happiness. A state of peaceful happiness. A state of peaceful happiness. He seemed more content, less crunchy. I added the crunchy part. Yeah, I added the crunchy part. All right, I confess. I added the crunchy part. Praise God. Got to make you laugh. Amen. The verb is satisfy. Amen. So the question that I have for you, and I want to hear from you. Let me leave it up there on that screen. Just quickly, it doesn't have to be a, a, a long sentence, whatever Holy Spirit has you. Describe to, me, describe to me what you define as a perfect moment. Now hear my heart. I'm not talking about when the trumpet sounds and Lord Jesus comes back and we're, we all know that's the obvious perfect moment, right? We're, we're home. Right? But just share with me and share with the church and share with Facebook. I'll repeat it when you say it. What is a perfect moment to you, Brother Cody? Not 
9.30 at night when all the babies are asleep and all they hear is the fan. Isn't that beautiful? Pastor, when you're in your prayer closet, amen, mom. Lost soul comes to salvation, brother Joey. Holy Spirit gives you peace about something. You get confirmation, amen. Beloved Amanda. Just peace. Peace unexplainable, right? Everything's going crazy, but be, uh, hallelujah. Brother Mike. Amen. Just knowing that when I pray, just knowing that when I call on him, he's there. Whoo, hallelujah, beloved. Brother Darren. Yes, when you find your calling. How powerful is that, right? When, when Father tells you, this is what I have called you to do. Hallelujah. In the morning when she wakes up, she rises and she says, it's so peaceful. I just spend time with the Lord. Amen. When you... Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Mama Kay says when she's up here and she, she's on her, I mean, I've seen her on her face. I've seen her push down. I've seen her push down like flat. And she says when I'm as low as I could be and he's the highest that can possibly. Glory to God. Thank you for that, Mama. Sister Sonia. Yes. I was waiting on that. I was waiting on that. And just so you all know, I'm not just cutting her off and just agreeing with her. She, got, she had Trish and I in tears because about a week ago she texts. And what her and Sarge do is they drive together down this road. And it's just quiet and peaceful. And what they do, what they do together is they look at deer. And Holy Spirit came on her and she shared with us that I've never known before, but this is one of the most precious moments that I can thank God for. And how awesome is that, right? Are they spending money, right? Are they, are they doing anything fancy? They're just with one another watching deer, amen? Who else? Amen. Elena, when you pray, you have that, it's a perfect moment, amen? That's beautiful. Sis said that when her, all of her kids can come to the house and everybody's under one roof, nobody arguing, nobody crunchy. And can you get an amen for that? Because if you crunchy, you need to get out. Y'all just pray for me. Don't judge me. Seriously, try me. Come to my house crunchy. I'll be like, you stay out here. Listen, I've done it many times. And I'm looking around and I don't think, I don't think it's any of you, but I've done it many. You got it? When Holy Spirit moves and, he, he, and she knows that he's happy. Amen. Sister. When, when your baby and you are, Addie. Oh, when Addie and her are in bed and she just, isn't that sweet? Many of you are like, okay, so anybody else? I don't want to skip over you anyway. Pardon. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cicadas, right? Nice balmy, nice, just beautiful evening. And all you do is hear the cicadas and just sit there and just take in the Lord. Amen. You see, Holy Spirit wanted you guys to share. And if you have anything, just raise your hand. We'll, we'll get to you. Holy Spirit wanted you to share your perfect moment. There's a reason why Father God wants us to worship this way. There's always a purpose behind the way we worship. And it's for this reason and this reason alone. We as a fallen creation put perfection as some type of goal that we try to obtain. 
But what Holy Spirit is trying to teach us tonight is you already voiced out moments that are perfect. Now hear my heart, family. Father, his expectation of you today, are you hearing me? Is when you have that next perfect moment, when you're sitting there in all of his glory, Father asks you to say, here I am, Father. Can you do that? Can we say that together? Here I am. There's a two-part to this. Next time, when you're in that perfect moment at 9.30 at night, you just hear the fan, the babies are just quiet asleep. Those little angels are, and you, you both just hold hands and say, here I am, Father. There's a two-part. This is two-part. Say with me two parts. The second part is this. When you say to Father God, here I am. God wants to hear you say out loud, not quietly, out loud, everything is perfect. Now can we say that? See, right now, I just saw in Holy Spirit, many of you right now, I just saw Holy Spirit, his light just like multiplied within you. And the reason why is because the devil wants to continue to bring you down and to reduce those perfect moments. What Holy Spirit did tonight is he reminded you the perfect moments that you have. You see, we should be living heaven on earth right now. We shouldn't be living a life where, well, one day, one day I could live. No, Lord Jesus came, died a horrible death. He rose again, he seated at the throne, he sent Holy Spirit through Father God to live in each one of us so that we can start living in this anointing called heaven. But you notice that it's so quick, it's, you notice that it's so quick that we can take the perfect moments and we can define those perfect moments as, oh, I just, I just want to rest. Oh, my gosh, what a long day it's been. Oh, my goodness, those kids, you just don't know. Oh, my gosh, my husband was just, oh, my. What do we do with those perfect moments? We trash those moments with garbage because we have no gratitude. Hallelujah. Sarge, what you just did right there, all of heaven, I know you noticed, all of heaven, there's just a wave of praise. And that's all Father's asking of us. Have you ever come to the reality that there's nothing more that God can do? Hmm. There's nothing more. He did the mostest. There's nothing more that he can do. He did it. And it's up to us to live it now. Amen. <laughs> Say with me, I am content. See, it's in those perfect moments that you are content. It's in those perfect moments in the vehicle when you know that, Father, you blessed me with your son. Father, you blessed me with your daughter. And I could see your presence in her and through her. I could see his, your presence, Father God. I mean, you guys are not the same. And by the grace and mercy of God, I'm not worthy. I was blessed to marry you all. We went through pre marriage You guys are completely different. Don't be haters. Let's give God praise. Amen. God could do a miracle in you too. Be happy. Hallelujah. Don't be haters. Haters going to hate. Haters are crunchy. In a state of peaceful happiness, satisfy. Isn't it sad that we can have these perfect moments, but then we translate it as, oh, what else likes to steal God's glory? TV? Stupid phones? Facebook, right? You could be in that perfect moment that God put that perfect moment in your life. You all said it. You all said what a perfect moment is to you. Ain't that beautiful? You all are blessed beyond measure that God Almighty will bless you with a perfect moment. Because you know, let me rewind. I rewound and I told you guys. The perfect moment is when the trumpet goes off. 
and we are raptured out of here. That's the perfect moment. But I said we can't talk about that. Holy Spirit wants to hear your perfect moment before that moment in time. And you guys testified my perfect moment. But are we allowing the devil to come into our perfect moments? And then we realize that now it's not a perfect moment. It's just a moment to watch TV. It's just a moment to, to get on Facebook. It's just a moment to allow the devil to come in. Lord, forgive us. You could feel in the atmosphere. You all are worshipers, amen. You could feel in the atmosphere, Father God, saying, I need your repentance. I need you to tell me that you're sorry. I need you to say that you're sorry that you stole my perfect moment. That's what we did. God blessed me with a perfect moment. What do I do? I turn on the TV. Or start texting people. I start fixing the websites. I start doing all this stuff for the church. And he's like, but what about our perfect moment? Huh? Lord, what about our perfect moment? You like to sit here and listen to the cicadas. But now it's just, you, you just sit here and you're, I'm not saying that you are, right? But whatever it is, how many of you confess that you allow the enemy to rob your perfect moment? Amen. We are sorry. Powerful mom, we are sorry. Amen. Say it with me, I am forgiven. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. You're forgiven. Listen, it's, hey, listen, it's, it's already done. Amen. It's already done. No more talking about it. No more, dang, man. No, it's forgiven. It's washed by the blood. We're just, we ain't going to do that no more. Amen. So what do you say again? Because it's so important to the Holy Spirit. I have to be accountable to this. Next time you're in that perfect place, what are you going to say first thing? No. Pastor's wife gets a, gets, gets, you don't even get a star for that one. Here I am. Right? Say it again. Here I am. Listen, there's power in what you just said. Because you, 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 you went into that perfect moment. You recognize perfection. And by saying, here I am, you're saying, Father, I reverence, I respect, I worship your presence. It's not just, here I am. It's not about that, here I am. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here I am. Basically, you're presenting yourself as an offering to the great I am. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. What's the second part you're going to say? There you go. Holy Spirit wants you to include yourself in that. I can't even move on yet. Here I am. Everything is perfect. When I speak those words, I'm speaking it over myself too. One more time. Everything is perfect. Listen, family, don't get religious with me or God because I'll chew you up and spit you out. Can I get an amen? The only reason why you can be perfect and blameless is because the perfect and blameless one lives on the inside. Can I get a hallelujah? So you're calling on the holy one. So when you say everything is perfect, listen, how many of you just right away enter into God's presence? Oh, my goodness, my bum back. Listen, God knows about your bum back, your hip, your athlete's foot, your runny nose, your itchy ear. God knows all that stuff. But guess what? Get into his presence and just say, you are holy, you are perfect, you are worthy, you are powerful. I love you, and I'm in love with you, and I just want to bless your holy presence and get rid of anything that does not belong to you. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Pastor and Mike is the only one excited right now, huh? I got I to gotta preach again like this because y'all are just spoiled. I know how to be abased. Abased means... To be living humbly. And I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I have learned. Say it with me. I learned. I learned. 
both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right, who strengthens me. Amen. I'm going to ask you all y'all to stand up. It's not over yet. Holy Spirit said you need to stand up and stretch out. Maybe some of y'all need to move to a different seat. I don't know what's going on. The, the reason why I'm upset, for one, number one, I'm only human. And another, as your pastor, you know that I'll never hold anything back. But my expectation, because we have a relationship. Can I get an amen? If you don't want a relationship with me, guess what? You ain't going to stay here. I'm just going to tell you right now. I want you to, but if you don't want a relationship, we're a relationship church. We are. We're, we're a fellowship church. We are the body of Christ. We are iron sharpens iron. Which means if you're a lone ranger and you want to do things on your own, and you don't want a fellowship, guess what? It's going to get to the point where you're just going to be a distraction. And right now I'm dealing with a lot of distractions that's coming from you guys. Because you know what's sad is that Holy Spirit's telling you some amazing things here that rocked my world today. And I need you guys to truly be in worship mode. I need you guys to really just be excited for the Lord. Right? I mean, I, I, I feel like. Seriously, you, you want to hear a confession from my heart? I feel like you all just want me to just be crazy and funny, and you guys are more excited about that than the truth of what Holy Spirit's doing right now in you and through you in His presence. Amen. So let's act like it. Let's act like it, right? I mean, let's be straight up. Let's act like it, right? Is it wrong for me to ask you to, to, to be just as involved? Is it wrong for me to ask you to be excited about God? Is it wrong for me to ask you to engage? Is it wrong for me to ask you to put a smile on your face? I love stealing what pastor says. Let me see some teeth or gums. Man, I love that pastor. That should be a shirt right there for real. Let me see your teeth or gums. Amen. But here in my heart family, we're living right now in the end times where I don't care. I don't care what your opinion is. We're going to worship God and allow God to examine your opinions. I don't care what they are. I really don't. I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care. Because I'm not sharing with you my opinion. Can I get an amen? I'm worshiping with you and we're going over the truth. Right? I had to tell somebody that this week. I'm like, look, I don't care what your opinion is about denominations, about religion, about the version of the Bible you got. I don't care about. Well, he told me. He goes, how, how can you not care? Aren't you a preacher? I go, I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. He's like, that's the same thing. I go, no, it's not. No, it's not. What you're trying to do is preach to me. What I'm trying to do with you is worship. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Are we good? Y'all give somebody a high five before you sit down. Praise God. All right, praise God. That was halftime. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, that was halftime, amen. Halftime show, Brother Aaron, amen. So I, le I learned to be content in living humbly. I learned to be content in living abundantly. I've learned to be content when I'm full. I learned to be content when I'm hungry. I learned to abound. I learned to be content when I abound in everything. And I also learned how to be content when I suffered. Say this word again, content. Content defines your worship life. You claim to be a worshiper of Lord Jesus Christ, a follower, a believer. You claim to obtain the promise of God Almighty that Holy Spirit lives in you. Well, he is the peace of God that lives inside of you. So you should be content in everything. Amen. If you're not content, if you're not content, then right there Holy Spirit showing you. What needs to be crucified at this altar tonight? Or maybe where you sit, whatever God is telling you to do. What, me, what I mean is, is if there's something going on within you that is pulling you, that, that is trying to put oppression on you, whatever it is, it's the devil and God is showing you that right now. And God is saying you do not have to put up with that any longer. Amen? You don't. I promise you, you don't. But see, the, 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 the action takes place in 
Will you choose tonight to be content that God is perfect and who he is? You see, that right there is the conviction, and that right there just breaks people. Right? Because guess what? I can play an upbeat song, and I can have the best praise and worship team up here. And I guarantee you, almost every one of you be standing up going, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I just feel so amazing right now. Everything is just so great. Oh, just so anointed. Is it really? Is it really? You don't need to answer. Or are you just getting emotional? God is not an emotion. He's a person. Can I get an amen? amen. Are you content? Are you content in how much Father God loves you? Amen. Are you content in how much Lord Jesus Christ loves you? Amen. Oh, it gets gooder and gooder. Are you content in how much Holy Spirit loves you? Amen. And so the beauty is, is that when you say yes to all these things, because that's agape, you should be content now, no matter what's coming your way. Not even half the room got that. It's so funny, because I tell you, are you content about how much Father God loves you? You say? I, I asked, I asked. Are you content in how much Lord Jesus Christ loves you? You say? I asked. Are you content as far as how much Holy Spirit loves you? You say? So I made a statement. Because you said amen to agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, no matter what comes your way, you should be content. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. The whole room lit up. Glory be to God. Now here, this is the victory. Amen. So we're going to go through the rest of this. Hallelujah. I'm scared. I'm not good enough. I'm worried, I'm anxious, I'm too sick, I'm, I'm too bad, I won't forgive, I can't because I will never be, I can't fight. Believe it or not, there's a lot of Christians that see themselves like this. How sad is it that you have the Lion of Judah living inside of you? But when you look at your own self, you see a little putty cat. See, I'm the kind of brother that I get upset about this kind of stuff. But you know what? You expect me to be upset about this. You expect me to. As a pastor of Open Arms Community Church, as someone who's going to be accountable to God at the highest level, this gets me upset. When a beloved daughter of God does not know who she is in Christ. This is why it's so important for you to know how much he loves you. You know why? If you don't know how much he loves you, you're going to try to find this love elsewhere. You're going to try to find it. You're going to try to find it in a man. You're going to try to find it in a woman. You're going to try to find it in same-sex partners, which is from the pit of hell. I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to me, family. You're going to try to find it in drugs. You're going to try to find it in gambling. You're going to try to find it in church hopping. You're going to try to find it in food. You're going to try to find it in hobbies. You're going to try to find this love because you're trying to find your identity. And the only way you can find your identity, as we said a month ago, the only one who has an identity, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the only way, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? Amen. This, is, this is the manifestation of, of deception. Say it with me, no more. No more. Hallelujah. Say it with me, I am, I am. A, lion. a lion. Let God hear your roar. Hallelujah. Praise God. Darren, you didn't roar now. Hey, how many of you want to hear Darren's roar? 
Darren, let God hear your roar. Come on, mighty man of God, let me hear you roar. There you go. He said, he said, he said, he said, roar? That's kind of that's like our dog Bentley. When he, when he barks, he spells it out. He goes, woof. He does. He goes, woof. Smart dog. So how many of you, how many of you heard about the boogeyman? Right? Many of us, we were all children one time. There's some of us that actually still is afraid of a boogeyman. And let me lay hands on you later, and you won't be afraid. I'll lay hands on you. I will. No more. As you guys know, the boogeyman and all that stuff, I, I got this shadow up there for a reason. I got this shadow up there for a reason because it just looks big and scary. And I know you know what it is as far as that shadow. But the boogeyman is a figment of your imagination. However, when you start getting into spiritual stuff, it starts to manifest truthful spiritual things. I mean, for those of you who've, who've, who have not seen people possessed by demons that crawl like snakes, that slither like snakes, listen, I've seen it. I've seen people throw up, um, you know, all kinds of things. I've, I've seen people, you know, go up against a wall and act like they're a spider. It's things like that, but guess what? They allowed the demonic things to start taking control, and all the devil wants to do is take control of this and start to reprogram the way you think, to start making you think that you're crazy, to start making you think that, you know, you're tormented, to start making you think that, right? And that's why I got all these things up there. Look at that. I'm paranoid. I'm worried. I'm sick. I'm crunchy. I'm just born like this. How many of you heard that before? Right? I mean, when people tell me that, I'm like, well, then you got what you want. You got what you want. I'm just born like this. Well, you got what you want. Why are we talking then? Because I have a God that can change that. Amen. Amen. But you're telling me you're more powerful than God because you're born like this. That's how you want to stay. See, I'm not trying to hurt nobody or be disrespectful, but I'm saying, where are we, right? Where are we in this relationship with God? Because, see, where I'm at with God is I want God to be God. Can I get an amen? I want God to be God. I want God to be God over my life. I want God to be God over my marriage. I want God to be God over my church family. I want God to be God of Open Arms Community Church. I want God to be God of our community. I want God to be God over Sarge and watch over all the police, right? Everybody who serves. I want God to be God, amen? So I have no right to tell God who he should be or how he should act or what he should do. I should just worship a perfect God and give everything I got just like you guys are doing right now. Because when we make this decision, Larry, when we make this decision, expect the breakthrough in the anointing of Christ. Because Holy Spirit says, my children, you get it. You just want me to be me and I want you to be you and let me work with that. Can I get an amen? Look at the shadow. The shadow that was casted was from a little putty cat. There's a reason behind this. First Peter 5 says this, be sober and vigilant. The word of God says about being sober and vigilant is to be aware. Mind, body, spirit, and soul. Say with me, agape. When this word, be sober and vigilant, when you study that, Father God is saying, my beloved child, every part of you, make yourself aware of this. Make yourself aware of this. Remember, we said so many times tonight, I learned, I learned, I am content. I am content. I'm not going to let this world move me. I'm not going to let gas prices move me. I'm not going to let how, how, much, how much meat costs at the grocery store, I'm not going to let it move me. Right? You know why? Because, Father, you are perfect. Amen? But when we study this word and God, God is saying, listen, my children, listen to me. You have to make yourself aware. You have to open up your mind. Clear your heart out right now. And Holy Spirit is saying, watch this, watch this. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about, say it with me, like. Last time I checked, like doesn't mean it's the real thing. It's a counterfeit. Right? 
The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So let me ask you something. First things first, let's address it because Holy Spirit, you guys know our Father God has such a sense of humor. Hello, look. <laughs> Only God could put a brother like this here, right? Right? He has a sense of humor. You could ask Pastor. Pa pa Pastor and I, we look at each other and we're like, man, God has a sense of humor. My God blessed me with a pastor. That I could only dream to be. I mean it with all my heart. I told Trish this the other day. Pastor John is one of the most loving, most faithful. I, listen, I'm glorifying God in you, brother. He'll do anything for anybody. And he don't care if he gets spit on, cussed out. He don't care if you run your mouth to bottom. You call him the next day, he would be like, what you need, brother? And I thank Father God that he blessed me with a pastor. I done told him. I know he's an apostle. I, I know that Father God's going to plant. And I told him, you tell me where to go, what to do. I, I, I'm, I'm all in. Are you guys all in? Are you guys all in? Hallelujah. One more time. Are you guys all in? Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen. So let's do one thing straight, one thing straight alone. You want to see the picture of a devil? I'm going to show you a picture of a devil. That is like a lion. Is that a boogeyman? Does it look like he got bite to him? Let me ask you something. Does, does, can, can that go around with a lion? Well, let me ask you this, though. Don't he got a mane on? Exactly. Say that word again. That's right. The devil is a fake. The devil is phony. And all he's going to try to do is continue to tell you his phony, his lies, his deception, to try to get in and to try to create chaos within you. Say with me, no more. My God shall supply all your, say this with me, need. King James Version here. There's no S. This is very important because last time I checked, when you say need, there's only one. Are we all on the same page here? When, when, when the Bible says need, does that mean only one? Now, if there's an S at the end, that means there's all kinds of things, right? 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 Hallelujah. But here the Bible says, listen, this is very important. In King James Version, it says just this one need. But then we go ahead and we start translating it over and over and over again, and now the S is just a part of it. But let's uncover what this one need is. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God our Father be glory forever and ever. The only need that you will ever want, beloved church family, is what you already got. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And because he is Lord and Savior of your life, the glory of God has rested upon you. Remember, when you study that word glory, many of you already know, in the Greek, it's doxa. That word doxa means God's view and opinion of you. When you're content with God, there's no question about how God views you and what's his opinion of you. Because now we go back. I'm not going to rewind anymore because that took a lot out of me. We go back to how are we content? Do you know how much Father God loves you? Do you know how much Lord Jesus Christ loves you? Amen. Do you know how much Holy Spirit loves you? You see, you have the glory of God in you. And those are the three things that Father God wants from you. Amen? So once again, to be not content is to live a life like that. And to be content is to live a life. Bless the Lion of Judah. Amen? It's, it's not just a shirt. 
It's not just a shirt. It's not just a fancy shirt with the big lion's head on it. It's a lifestyle. It's an identity. Amen. Stand up on your feet with me. Praise God. Let's say it all together in the Lord. Say it with me. Here I am. Everything is perfect. Including me. One more time. Hands lifted up in complete surrender. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit is just stirring mightily right now. Beloved family, let, let's, just, let's just have such a moment in the Lord that we can bless God with an earthquake up in heaven. One more time. Here I am. Here I am. Everything is perfect. Including me. One last time. I know you guys already know, many of you know, I'm just praying for that trumpet to go off. Here I am. Everything is perfect. Including me. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.